It is now time for our member's statements. I recognize the member for Windsor to come see. Good afternoon, Speaker. This is a shout out to David Warner. As you know, he was the Speaker of this House between 1990 and 1995. These days, he's the editor of The Informer, a magazine published by the Ontario Association of Former Parliamentarians. In the latest issue, Mr. Warner chose to highlight the sculptures and monuments on the precinct grounds here at Queen's Park. What caught my eye was a feature on Walter Allward. Most of us wouldn't recognize his name, but he's the man who created what perhaps is the most remarkable monument ever created by a Canadian, the Vimy Memorial in France. It took him, it took him 14 years to complete that extraordinary memorial to peace. David Warner writes that Allward was a modest, self-taught, talented man who left school at 14. Around the legislature, Walter Allward created the Northwest Rebellion statue and William Lyon Mackenzie, the struggle for democracy in Upper Canada, as well as statues dedicated to General John Graves Simcoe, Sir Oliver Mowat, and John Sandfield Macdonald. His smaller sculptures and monuments still stand today in places such as Stratford, Peterborough, and Speaker, I am so proud to say, in my own community of Windsor. Walter Aylward in uh, 1906, 30 years before his Vimy masterpiece in France, created the Boer War Memorial Fountain, which still stands in the Queen Elizabeth II sunken gardens in Windsor's Jackson Park. In Ottawa, this talented man has two statues on Parliament Hill, Robert Baldwin and Louis Hippolyte Lafontaine, and the truth and justice figures cast in bronze that flank the entrance to the Supreme Court building. Speaker, on behalf of all of us, I say thank you to David Warner for reminding us of the significance of what surrounds us in this wonderful place, our provincial parliament. And David, thank you for informing me about the Windsor connection to that magnificent Vimy Memorial in France. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Richmond Hill. I am proud to announce that my riding, Richmond Hill, being one of the largest towns in Ontario, is renamed as the City of Richmond Hill. Hey. When the council reinforced its position in York Region and the province as an, un as an urbanized and competitive municipality. Indeed, the city of Richmond Hill is home to many successful businesses. Just last week, I had the honor to share the joy and success of Call for Inc. They have built an award-winning education software for over 30 years. Recently, their product, ESPY, has won them the contract from all the school boards in New Zealand. The York Region District School Board uh, is also one of their clients. ASPE is the most comprehensive learning and analytical platform. It engages students, parents, and reaches and avail available to them so that they can connect with, uh, with all the devices. It enables personalized learning experience and gives school districts, states, and provinces or national government powerful new ways to measure and improve the education effectiveness. We are very proud of the level of new innovation and creativity demonstrated by this team. Way to go, SP, and way to go, City of Richmond Hill. Member statements. The member for Algoma, Manitoula. Well, thank you, Speaker. And the two individuals that I want to talk to uh, to you about uh, today is I think I mentioned them in my inaugural speech. So it's been a long time I haven't talked to them. They braved a pretty tough weekend. This weekend uh, they were with me. They actually braved the drive that we took from my place all the way down to Manitoulin Island, and you know they brave the discussions that they had with me as the uh, member for Algoma Manitoulin and they just were tireless and put up with me all weekend and you know what speaker they're the most two individuals that make me so proud to take my seat each and every day and I want to thank my son Ruck and my other son Mathieu 
for having spent this weekend and made last weekend so special for Dad. You guys have no idea what it meant to me, just the fact that we went out on the lake and we fished together, we laughed together, we ate together. I want to give a shout out to Liz and Rupert, who were our hosts, who put us up in this beautiful little cabin. Nothing fancy, a wood stove and just four walls and a couple of windows, a couple of cots. It was just a remarkable moment for me and my sons. And I encourage all members that when you have that opportunity to being a dad, it's one of those, those rewarding things that you have is, be a dad or be a mom and just be there for your kids when they have that opportunity because you know what? This place takes a toll on you. And it's nice to go back home and get re energized. And I want to say, Rock, Mathieu, thank you so much. Dad really loved the weekend. The member for Kitchener Conestoga. Thank you again, Yay. Mr. Speaker. And, uh, a very special member statement here today, and I'm sure you're going to really appreciate this, Mr. Speaker. It is a, a true pri uh, privilege to rise this afternoon to celebrate another successful year for the Elmira Maple Syrup Festival, Mr. Speaker. For its 55th year, the people of Elmira and Woolwich Township welcomed over 60,000 visitors from across Ontario and beyond to enjoy the world's largest one-day maple syrup festival. Beyond the consumption of golden brown pancakes topped with locally tapped delicious maple syrup, Ontarians enjoyed a horse and buggy ride out to the sugar bush and various exhibitions for all ages. Team Harris was out and about all day welcoming visitors, and this included engaging, and which I'm sure you've done over the years, Mr. Speaker, the pancake flipping relay. Uh, we were armed with spatulas, tennis rackets, scuba flippers, and frying pans, and we were ready to take on all rivals. Uh, but we had a secret weapon with us, Mr. Speaker, a ringer, if you will, the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport, the Honourable Member from Vaughan Woodbridge. I would like to thank the Minister for working the spatula in our victory over our local Liberal MP. And then taking some time to share his expertise at the Crafts and Collectibles Market to join and to join uh, Waterloo Region Chair Karen Redmond, Woolwich Mayor Sandy Schantz and Event Chair Karen, or, sorry, my apologies, Kim Dixon to tour the half-mile-long outdoor mall. I know the minister shared his appreciation for Kim Dixon and the countless volunteers who make this event possible, and I would like to invite all of my colleagues to Elmira next year for the 56th Annual Maple Syrup Festival. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Tomiskaming Cochrane. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome and invite everyone from both in the legislature and those people watching to a very important uh, event that's happening in my riding. Uh, it's called the Central Canadian Junior A Hockey Championship, better known as the Dudley Hewitt Cup, and it's happening from April 30th to May 4th. And the great thing about holding the Dudley Hewitt Cup in Cochrane, it's likely still going to feel like hockey weather in Cochrane because there will likely still be snow. And it's a combination of the Northern Ontario Junior Hockey League, the Ontario Junior Hockey League, and the Superior International Junior Hockey League, and it's hosted by Cochrane's own Cochrane Crunch. And it's in a, going to be held in a beautiful arena known as the Tim Hortons Event Centre because Cochrane is the birthplace of none other than Tim Horton. They're very proud of that. They're very proud of their hockey. They're very proud of their young people, and I wish uh, uh, I wish them a great hockey tournament. And if people come to Cochrane and you're wondering what else could you do in Cochrane? Lots. Lots of things, but I particularly recommend the polar bear habitat. Yep. It's a research facility where they have they act they do research with polar bears and one of their main goals is to see how polar bears are going to be able to adapt and if they're going to be able to adapt to climate change, which we all know is happening and we all have to be cognizant of it and Cochrane is taking steps to help the world see how it's going to affect them. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Don Valley West. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this past Sunday I had the opportunity to go and visit my sister and I stopped at one of the uh, en routes to pick up a cup of tea. It was early, it was quiet, and there wasn't much, uh, much activity. And I had the opportunity to have a conversation that I have had over and over again with young people in their workplaces, in their colleges, in their universities, or in their high schools, Mr. Speaker. The two young women working behind the counter are both part-time employees and they are part-time students. What they wanted to talk about 
about was their anxiety about next year. They shared their worry about whether they would be able to continue in their courses, whether they'd be able to go to school at all because of the cuts to student assistance, Mr. Speaker. These are enterprising young people. They're working hard to complete their degrees. They're eager to make a contribution to their communities, and they're telling us that they may have to give up that path because of the changes that have been made and the concern that they have about debt. Our government put in place the free tuition program, Mr. Speaker, for low- and middle-income families because our advantage in Ontario with our huge geography and our small population is our young people. We need everyone at their best. And, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of those young people who are on the brink of their future all across this province, I encourage the government, I implore the government to think again about those cuts to student assistance because we need them, our economy needs them all to be at their best, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I, I rise today to tell members of the Legislature about an amazing young woman from Perry Sound. Megan Oldham is an 18-year-old freestyle skier who, in her first season on the World Cup circuit, won a gold medal in slopestyle in Switzerland on March 30th. This gold medal completes a set with a bronze medal she won at Mammoth Mountain in the U.S. and a silver medal she, she won in Italy in January. With the gold medal win, Megan also won the 2019 Crystal Globe for slope, slope Style, an award given to the competitor with the most World Cup points. Megan learned to ski right here in Ontario, just off Highway 400 at Mount St. Louis. Megan started freestyle skiing with her older brother, Bruce, who himself won a bronze medal at the 2019 Canada Winter Games. Megan follows in the footsteps of another skier from Perry Sound, Muskoka, Olympic gold medalist Dara Howell from Huntsville. I hope the successes of both Megan and Dara can inspire more young women to take up freestyle skiing, just like both Megan and Dara were inspired by another Ontario athlete, Sarah Burke. On behalf of all the members of the Legislature, I want to express our congratulations to Megan on an outstanding first season on the World Cup circuit and her gold medal and Crystal Globe. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear Government, it has been 25 years since the Rwandan genocide. As the Toronto Star explains, those who survive say they always strive to keep the balance between moving forward with life and remembering and paying homage to the departed. So what does it mean to pay homage to the departed? How can we join those who have survived to heal in Ontario? Well, last Thursday, this House voted unanimously to condemn and address Islamophobia. However, that same day, a concerned settlement organization contacted our office, having just received word that the Attorney General is considering cuts to legal aid for immigrants and refugees. A coalition of settlement organiza uh, organizations quickly came together to alert the Attorney General that, and I quote, cuts will put at risk the lives of thousands of people seeking safety here in Ontario. And last Thursday, we agreed that our choice of language matters in our fight against racism of all kinds. But yesterday, this Conservative government was once again referring to asylum seekers as, and I quote, illegal border crossers, a term that, purposefully or not, serves only to degrade the dignity of real people and dismiss the stories of hardship that brought them here to safety. So I ask, does defunding legal aid services for refugees pay homage to the victims of the Rwandan genocide who came to Canada as refugees? Does calling asylum seekers derogatory names pay homage to the survivors of the Rwanda genocide who found asylum in Canada and in Ontario? Dear government, please do better. Ontario is watching. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 5th of April, the province approved the construction of a new Catholic French school in Ottawa, which welcomes students from K to grade 6. There will be daycare services for their families. Our government is very proud to approve the construction of this French elementary school for the Francophones in the area region. We, have a, a, we focus uh, our resources on the educators for their work to find 
better jobs in the modern economy. Once done, this school will offer a new space who will welcome more than 400 students and three rooms for daycare services that will welcome 49 students. Mr. Speaker, we know that high-quality learning space will make sure students are su successful. We prove that we invest in the future of Ottawa and Carlton students and, and their families. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Flamborough Glenbrook. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am so pleased to rise today to recognize an historic investment of $105 million U.S. in Fusion Pharmaceuticals, a McMaster University startup company. It is the largest single investment ever in a Canadian startup and one of the largest single private investments in Canadian biotechnology. Fusion Pharmaceuticals, based at the McMaster Innovation Park in my hometown of Hamilton, develops cancer therapy products that target cancer cells by delivering a precise dose of radiation. It is designed to attack drug-resistant tumors that do not respond to traditional therapies, including lung, brain, prostate, and breast cancer. This multi-million dollar international investment reflects strong support for McMaster University's work, its people, and its product pipeline. As a result, they will be able to broaden their team and develop new therapies. This investment will allow Fusion to design products for the marketplace directly out of university research. Commercializing McMaster's research is achieving real results. More than 100 people will be hired over the next three years. The first clinical trial is already underway in Hamilton and Montreal. More trials are expected to be added around the world. Once again, I would like to congratulate Fusion Pharmaceuticals on this investment, and I wish them all the best as they continue their groundbreaking work. That concludes our member's statements for this afternoon. The member for Orléans has informed me she has a point of order. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I'm uh, seeking unanimous consent so my colleague from the Liberal Caucus and I can split our five minutes of response to both ministerial statements, so it will be about two and a half minutes each. Thank you. The member for Orléans is seeking unanimous consent of the House to split the, uh, the time between her colleague in response to the ministerial statements. Agreed? Agreed. Reports by committees. I beg to inform the House that today the 